The Lord be with you. I want to welcome each of you here on this Sunday, this 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. Today in our gospel reading, we're going to hear about Bartimaeus, a blind man on the side of the road who is healed. A lot of times people look at that as just a simple miracle healing, and it was, don't take me wrong. But when we hear about healing and we hear about the cry for mercy, there's a whole lot more going on. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Our opening hymn for today is, Oh, bless the Lord, my soul, please rise and we sing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its ending, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its ending, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. 
upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. be with you. Let us pray. O God, the helper of all who call on you, have mercy on us and give us eyes of faith to see your Son, that we may follow him on the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading this week is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 through 9. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chiefs of, chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame the pregnant women and she who is in labor. Together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is from Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 through 28. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to, save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints the Son, who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord.
Speak together with me the words of Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And then they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling to you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Together we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, and I ask for the children to come forward for the children's message. Thank you, Mr. Fox. So how are you guys doing today? Doing pretty good? Now, you all can see, right? Now, that's actually uh, sounds like a silly question. But did you know that it used to be, even when I was a child, that there were a lot of people who couldn't see? Now, there are people who are blind. I I think, have you ever met someone who is blind? That they can't see with their eyes or they have vision problems? But it happens a whole lot less than it used to be. But did you know that there were people who just simply could not see? I'm going to tell you, if it weren't for the fact that my eye doctor, who miraculously was able to do some surgery, if he hadn't have actually taken some cloudy lenses off my eyes, I probably couldn't see today. It it's actually it was kind of, a neat, kind of a neat surgery. I think God created that miracle of that surgery just to have that happen. Isn't that kind of neat? So I can see, I can see you guys absolutely... A hundred percent. Now, because of that surgery, I have to wear trifocals. <laughs> you know, what, what do you just figure? Oh, well. But you know what? I can see you. I know who you are. I see each and every single one of you, and it is absolutely great. But in Jesus' day, there was this guy named Bartimaeus. Can you say that's a big name? Can you say Bartimaeus? Bartimaeus. We'll just call him Bart for now. Okay? So here is Bart. And Bart is blind. And in those days... If a person was blind, they didn't have all of the things. They didn't have surgeries. They didn't have um, schools. They didn't have all of the things that help people who can't see. They didn't, it was really very difficult. 
And in fact, the people believed that somehow those people who were blind were worse sinners than the rest of them. That's kind of sad, isn't it? Huh. So the only thing they could do, they couldn't have a job, they could sit by the side of the road and they could beg. Now today we saw somebody by the side of the road and we think, why don't they go get a job? But you know, in those days, people who sat by the side of the road for people to give them money, that was the only way that they could make a living. That's something, isn't it? So think about all the problems that they had. First of all, they couldn't see. Then they couldn't make a living. Then there wasn't any way that pe people thought badly about them. And so, you know, it sounds, it sounds like it's a pretty miserable life. If you were like that, wouldn't you want to be able to see? Well, Bartimaeus wanted to see. Bart was blind. And also, because he was blind, I'm sure he also thought that he was a worse sinner than anybody else, that he had done horrible, horrible stuff. And maybe he had, but maybe not. Maybe he was just a sinner like you and me. Well, guess what? One day, he hears that Jesus is coming along. And he knows who Jesus is. He's heard about Jesus. He knows that Jesus is the Savior. Ever since he was real little, he'd been taught in church about how there would be a Savior who would come. And here comes Jesus. And as Jesus gets near, he starts crying out. And there are people who don't want him to do that, but he keeps on doing it. And finally, Jesus says, hey, come over here. And he says, what do you want? And he says, I want to be able to see. For him, that's kind of a big thing. And you know what? Does Jesus say, ah, go on, get out of here? Is that what he says? No. You know, what does he do? He heals him. And he can see. That's amazing. Now, in the sermon, we're going to be talking a whole lot about what that actually means. But one of the things that it means is for the people in his community, the people who thought that he was a horrible sinner, guess what? It also see, they also see that he is forgivable because not only did Jesus give him sight, but he also forgives his sins. So what about you and me? Does Jesus forgive us? <sighs> you know what? I think about the things that I have done wrong and the way that sin has shown up in my life. You know, I, I've, I've not stolen anything. Well, I'll take that back. I stole a peanut. I have to say it because I talked about that in Bible study this morning. Sometime I'll tell you all. You know, um, I, I've done bad things. But does, has God forgiven me? Does it make the bad things good? No, not at all. But has God forgiven me because of what Jesus did? Oh, boy. That's exciting, isn't it? Isn't that good news that we can share with people? Well, and you know, my encouragement is that we find ways to tell people what Jesus has done for them too. Not only has he done that for us, but he's done that for them. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have taken away our blindness to our sin. You have shown us Jesus. And we pray that you would help us as we share that good news with people around us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you guys can go ahead and go back to your seats and we're going to continue with our sermon hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today as we follow Jesus as he leaves Jericho, we meet a man named Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, sitting on the roadside. Now in our day and age, people who are blind will likely live a very good life. Way back 30 years ago, I met a pastor in St. Louis, a pastor, senior pastor of a very large church. And this man was blind from the time that he was a child. Now, the only concession to his blindness seemed to be that his wife or his friends drove him around to do visits. But everything else he did. He could read Braille. He listened to books on tape. Now we have, you can go to, um, how many of you listen to books on recorded books? Does anybody do that? Yeah, a number of people do. I haven't quite done that yet. I still like to actually read the letters, read the words, but that's really kind of a neat way to listen, to hear. Um, you know, he, he, he had a really good education. He went to a school when he was in grade school and then in high school that actually taught him skills where he would be able to live a regular life. No one actually looking at him, just seeing him walk through life, other than the fact that he carried a cane, would know that he was blind. You know, he was one of these people who was kind of special. He used a sort of echolocation, kind of like bats. He talked about how he had been trained and his ears were very sensitive and he, could, he knew when he was walking up to something or to somebody. It was just, it was actually kind of uncanny to see how he did that. So, you know, for him, being blind meant absolutely nothing at all. Except that he couldn't see. Not saying that he wouldn't have loved to see. People in his community thought that he was great. But then that's not how it was in Jesus' day. The community that lives around blind Bartimaeus believes that Bartimaeus' blindness is a sign that there is something extra wrong with him. In those days, if a person had some sort of a disfigurement or there was something wrong with an eye, wrong with a limb, they couldn't walk, whatever, they thought that that person wasn't just a regular sinner, but they thought that what they had wrong with them was a special punishment for some extraordinary sin that that person themselves had committed, or perhaps maybe their parent or grandparent had committed an extraordinary sin, and so they were being punished for it. Very rarely would anyone go out of their way to help someone who was blind, there was no way they could get a regular job. They would give them money. They would throw some coins on their cloaks as they sat on the side of the road. You know, today you drive along and you see people panhandling. And you know, I have to admit, and this is maybe wrong of me, I have to confess it. I have this internal dialogue that goes, you know, really could they be working? They look like they maybe really could work. How many, don't, don't raise your hand, but think about it. How many of you think that way? Well, the reality is maybe some of them can't, in, in all honesty. But that said, in those days, if you saw someone on the side of the road and they were disfigured, lame, blind, had some kind of a problem, that made some sense. And people would maybe take some pity on them. And maybe out of some guilt, they would throw some money their way. Now, quite frankly... Bartimaeus wasn't treated as bad as if he'd been a leper because lepers were expected to live outside of the community because leprosy was catching. But still, his life isn't very good. He has the constant reminder, not only of his illness, but that people believe that that illness, that blindness, is a byproduct of his own sin. Now, we, we do know that Illness is a byproduct of sin in general. But if I'm blind or if I am hearing impaired, which I actually am, it comes from listening to too much music through headphones when I was young, that it's maybe 
not a result of my own particular sin. Could be, but probably not. Bartimaeus actually also knows his real sin because he's a human being. And just like everyone else, he has this tendency to put God second, third, fourth, fifth, and put himself first. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us that, but we know that he's a human being, right? And human beings do this by their very nature. I am sure that he struggles with temptation and maybe even anger over his circumstance and maybe even despair and frustration and heartbreak and doubt. And, of course, he knows he's blind. He knows his trouble. And he knows that there is nothing he can do and there is nothing that anybody in his day and age can do or will do to help. Until that day, the one that we hear about in today's gospel reading, when Jesus of Nazareth comes by and Bartimaeus hears people talking about it and he cries out for mercy. Now, we may not be like Bartimaeus. But we have to confess, as we did in the confession of sins, that we are blind sinners. We said, I am a poor, miserable sinner, and I confess unto God all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended him and justly deserved his temporal and eternal punishment. We may be able to see with the eyes in our heads, but we confess that still we are blind spiritually blind. We are not looking to put God first. And as a result, there are bad things that come into our lives. As a result, naturally, because of our sin, there's heartache and despair and trouble and pain. Paul in 1 Corinthians reminds us that Satan has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Peter in 1 Peter chapter 1 talks about how we can be so nearsighted and blind that we continue to live in our sins. In 1 John, we hear that it is possible to walk in darkness and not know where we are going because the darkness has blinded our eyes without faith. And John then ties that together with the fact that because of that, we can go on hating our brothers and sisters in Christ. And all of us in our blindness cannot find our way to God. We can't get out of the darkness. There is no way we can discover any kind of light inside of us. There is no way that we can go into our minds or into our hearts that will help us get rid of the sin that damns us. And in our blindness, we know where the road ends up, don't we? Death. Hell. So the question then is, how has your blindness kept you from seeing God? How have you put yourself first, your circumstances first? How have you justified your life where you have turned away from God? Has it left you without hope at times? Has it caused you to turn the wrong way at times? Has it led you down dark paths at times? Oh, how we have needed to hear the good news of Jesus. And the word that we have heard creates faith. And we cry out for mercy in our blindness. And so it's there on that road to Jericho that we meet Bartimaeus begging. And he hears the buzz through the crowd. Here comes Jesus of Nazareth. Bartimaeus has heard that word about Jesus, I'm sure, again and again and again. His reputation, Jesus' reputation has spread. He has heard about the miracles that have been done. And he has heard people say that Jesus must be the Messiah. The miracles that Jesus does, the Bible lets us know from the Old Testament that those are actually a signal that Jesus is the Messiah. They're things that only God can do. 
And Bartimaeus knows that only Jesus can help him. That only Jesus, the one who is coming, can set captives free. It's important to note, Bartimaeus knows who Jesus is. He calls out to him, Jesus, son of David. Son of David is a phrase in the Bible that is used about the Messiah only. Son of David lets us know that Bartimaeus believes. Here, coming down the road, is the promised Savior. And it's important to note, the faith that Bartimaeus has that Jesus is the Savior, who can help him, isn't something that Bartimaeus has worked up inside of himself. It's not something that he has reasoned out on his own. In fact, it's a result of Bartimaeus having heard God's word since he was a child. He has heard in the Old Testament all of the promises of the coming of Christ. And now it's a result of people talking about what Jesus has done. And now at this moment say, Jesus is here. And so Bartimaeus cries out in faith, Son of David, have mercy on me. Now, that word mercy in the Bible can carry the sense of pity, but it's much, much more. He's not asking Jesus to pity him, like, oh, poor Bartimaeus, and pat him on the head and then walk away from him. He's asking God who takes sinners and saves them from sin, and he forgives them, and he heals their relationships with God the Father. Keep in mind that when Bartimaeus cries out for mercy, he isn't just asking for healing from blindness to his eyes. Yes, he, he does that too. He says, heal my eyes. But keep in mind, again, in the community in which he lives, the blindness that he has is a signal to the people around him that Bartimaeus must be some sort of a super sinner. Now, it's all false. It's not true. So Bartimaeus is focused on his sight, most certainly, but it's not just healing of his eyes for which he is asking. He is asking for forgiveness. Because keep in mind, Bartimaeus is a part of that culture and a part of that society. I am sure that Bartimaeus actually also believed that he had to have been a great sinner. Because he knew his own sin. So he calls out, son of David. And what does he do? God himself comes and performs a miracle. Another thing to keep in mind, Bartimaeus isn't saved or healed because he is able to work up or create or develop just the right amount of faith. I've talked about that a little bit before, but I'm going to focus on this for just a moment. This passage from Mark 10 has sometimes been used as a way of trying to prove that all that we have to do is just work up the right amount of faith and we can have all of our illnesses and all of our problems taken care of. But notice, that's not what this means. It's not a matter of us working up the faith and then we can get stuff from God. It's not as if Jesus is a motivational speaker, a televangelist, who is firing up Bartimaeus' own spirit and then Bartimaeus, once he gets all fired up, is healed and gets what he wants. As we said earlier, all that happens to Bartimaeus is a result of God's word creating faith. And by grace, given through the Holy Spirit, Bartimaeus clings to that promise. Bartimaeus is given sight to see and given faith to see his Savior. And it's all a gift from God given through the word. So this morning that we have all come here to St. Mark Lutheran Church as beggars on the side of the road, blind, unable to find our own solutions in the darkness of sin, unable to find our own way to God, unable to get rid of that darkness in the world around us, unable to save ourselves, we are caught in our sin and we know that sin leads to death. We know that's true, but isn't it a little startling to hear us called beggars? I'm better than a beggar. But the reality is, 
beggars can't help themselves. And they take what they're given. And they cry out. Now, the fact is that God sees us as more than beggars. But still, we are before him crying out to him. Isn't it good that God has sent people to us? Pastors, parents, grandparents, Sunday school teachers, friends, neighbors, spouses, who've been telling us throughout our lives, here comes Jesus of Nazareth, the Savior, the Messiah, the Forgiver, the light who lightens our darkness, the one who gives sight to the blind. Isn't it amazing that God has sent his word to us? That we hear and we cry out, Son of David, have mercy on us? We cry out for sight and that darkness would leave us and that we could see him. And so we confess in our sins, I'm heartily sorry for my sin and sincerely repent of them. And then we say these words, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being, a poor blind being. We recognize that it's Jesus' mercy. But oh, we cling to the promise that we've heard. We cling to the promise that we hear again and again. Proclaimed in Bible study, proclaimed in the absolution, your sin is forgiven. That is Jesus' word to you. Proclaimed in our baptism. Proclaimed every time you hear a sermon, every time you're in a Bible study, every time you do your private devotions, your sin is forgiven. Jesus is the one who gives us our sight. Through his death and resurrection, he's given us everything. Think about people that maybe you could tell that to, who need some encouragement, who seem to be walking in darkness, who use words that let you know that they are confused and hurting, just as we have been confused and hurting. The good news is Jesus is the one who opens our eyes not to look at ourselves but to look at him, our Savior. Now may the peace that passes all our human understanding, may it keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please rise.
Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Gracious, graciously turn us from all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend all who are in need, praying for them at all times. Thy will be done, Lord, in your mercy. Grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs, Lord, in your mercy. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin might ever frighten or alarm us, Lord, in your mercy. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world in its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Together we pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Good morning. Just got a few announcements. Um, as usual, every Sunday, 9.15, upstairs in room Luke, uh, Pastor Addison is uh, having the adult uh, Bible study. And we are still in the book of Galatians. Uh, and an adult inquirers class, otherwise known as adult confirmation, continues this Wednesday, the 27th, at 7 p.m. in the same room upstairs of Luke. Uh, if you have any questions on that, you can ask Pastor. The youth confirmation class is this Thursday, the 28th at 6 p.m. And the Pregnancy Help Center is asking for help with diapers and baby wipes. There's a playpen in the North X, uh, where if you have some donations, you can leave them there. And the youth will be selling rolls again from, and gift cards from the Texas Roadhouse uh, to help raise funds for the National Youth Gathering this summer. Uh, they will be selling until the 7th of November, and you can look in the, the bulletin for your flyer. It has more details about that. Um, Trunk or Treat will be this coming Saturday, the 30th, um, from 4 to 6 p.m. And also looking if you can donate any candy, there is a drop box in the North X for that as well uh, to help support that event. Uh, take a time to look at the rest of your announcements and uh, see yourselves out today. Thank you.